Fortunately with us on the Thruxnar, we don't have to make many changes to the bike. We we'll change the gearing with the sprockets, you can see here. We'll change the tire pressure depending on how loose the track is. And we'll change the seats depending on how comfortable I am in moving around. So what are some of the changes driving? Here are the primary ones and they're all interdependent. Uh, the condition of the salt drives a lot of the changes, so does the wind. We're kind of constantly trying to anticipate the track conditions. How loose it is, how hard it is, which direction the wind's blowing, how fast the wind's blowing, so we can change our gearing. Uh, we don't usually do that a lot in the first couple of days until we get a feel for the track. Here you can see the guys changing the uh, front sprocket, which is the, by far the hardest to do. And I try not to do many front sprocket changes. But here we're going from an 18 tooth to a 17. It's, this is the first change we made on the front sprocket. And it seemed to work pretty well. Of course, no uh, work would be done without me giving my supervision and advice. The rider really does have the last call on how he wants everything. Me and Mr. Bill sometimes disagree, but sometimes we, we agree on things. Here are the boys changing the rear sprocket. Uh, we went from a 40 to a 37. Occasionally you do break things out here, and that's what the guys are working on right here. Uh, broke the brackets on the side of the fairing and a fork stop. So they did a good job fixing them really quick. I think there are four major improvements that contributed to the bike increasing its top speed over stock about 20 miles an hour. In no particular order, they would be the Tech Bike 303 cam, the Meerkat exhaust and X-Bike system, uh, the DNK tune, and the AirTech fairing and chin fairing by Terramet. Fortunately, we didn't have to spend a lot of time waiting in line this year, but it did give us time to reflect and talk to some gray beards about what was going on. And one of the problems we had was we were actually running better in the afternoons than in the mornings. This is counterintuitive of what we've seen in the past with this bike and other bikes. We met some old friends and we met some new friends. And we met some famous people while we were out here. Got to briefly talk to Wayne Carini from Chasing Classic Cars out here. There's Dave Spangler, pilot of the Turbinator and Turbinator 2. Dave was very gracious with his time and even signed a t-shirt for me. Thanks, Dave. Then there's Val Valerie Thompson, who's the world's fastest woman. 328 miles an hour, fellas. That's pretty dang fast. Your speed demon doing up his usual tricks, running 480 plus mile an hour, training a new pilot also. Then there's a new kid on block, Turbinator 2, running an old chassis with twin Tesla engines. Look at the specs on this baby. It went over 285 miles an hour before we left. Then there's some truly different vehicles out here. This is what you're seeing is a 285 plus mile an hour snowmobile. They're French Canadians, folks. In the end, we're all kind of like this little boy here when it comes to motorcycles and cars. Big thanks to Mr. Bill, Jaime, and Christina for the majority of these photos and videos. Thanks, guys. And of course, we couldn't get it done without Sonny being on the crew. He's a big part of this whole thing. Thanks, Sonny. If you want to see the Thruxton running down the salt flats, Go to the Flat Cap Cafe Racer channel.